We will program the Arduino board using a special dialect of C++. I'll now give you a high-level overview of the language. This is oriented towards students who have some programming experience, but not necessarily Arduino experience. As a starting point, I'm going to show you the web page, which is the language reference. Um, this can be found from the help menu inside of the IDE or on the arduino.cc website. And what you'll see is that some of the keywords are familiar. They're basically C++, um, largely also C keywords. Uh, but then there's some special keywords and constructs that are very Arduino specific. It's a specially chosen subset of C++. It's designed to avoid a lot of the complexities of C++, but still provide kind of beginner-friendly programming in a, in a syntax that is C. For our purposes, we'll basically treat it as C and not get too concerned, although it's possible to use uh, more advanced C++ features. In practice, programs are compiled, downloaded, and run. There's a whole cycle to getting a program to go. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to be using Tinkercad to do the demo at first, and so it's just simpler. There's no separate download step. Um, we're primarily going to be doing numerical and logical computation, so dealing in numbers and true-false values. So the most common kinds of data we'll use will be Booleans, uh, small 16-bit integers, larger 32-bit integers, and sometimes floating-point numbers. The Arduino can do floating-point. It's not terribly fast, but that can be also be useful. Um, we'll also use data tables like arrays and maybe occasionally strings, although most string processing isn't that useful for us. And it also burns through memory very quickly, so the capabilities are kind of limited. Um, I brought up here a kind of uh, sample circuit and sample program. Uh, it has a uh, hobby servo uh, connected to an Arduino and an oscilloscope to show the control signal. Um, if I run it, um, you can see that the Arduino uh, emits a variable pulse that you see on the oscilloscope, which is commanding the hobby servo to move back and forth at a regular rate. So just looking at the program briefly, uh, and this uses some various features, we'll, we'll break down separately at other times. Um, it is C++. It has a, a text-based language. It's line-oriented with lines that are terminated. Um, there's functions that are declared. Uh, there's variables that are declared both outside, globals outside the functions, as well as inside the functions. So let's just walk through a couple of features just so we kind of see what's going on. The first is this example actually does use C++ objects right off the bat. Um, if you look at the top, it, there's a servo object that is called indicator, which is a complex data object that's designed to represent the physical connection to this, the hobby servo. Um, and this is the first example of a case where um, it is declaring a C++ object, but the syntax is quite friendly, and one can simply ignore the C++ features and treat indicator as, as a thing, as a data object to manipulate. Um, in this example, there's two functions. And this is characteristic of the Arduino system. There's a void setup function, which is a function that's called once when the chip initializes, and in physical world, when it powers on, um, which is used to set up initial state, initialize hardware, any kind of one-time program activity. The second function is called loop. Inside the firmware, this function is called just repeatedly inside a while loop. And the idea is that most embedded programs have some kind of operation cycle that they repeat infinitely as long as power is applied. So the loop function is called again and again just to perform actions. In this case, um, what it's doing is it's uh, keeping track of how many times it's run with a step counter. Um, it's using a little bit of math to calculate an angle from that, the math, the math library sign function to compute a varying signal, and then um, line 22 here, the indicator dot write. It's taking some computed angle and degrees and sending it out to the hobby servo. And there we see, once again, that notation of indicators.write is a C++ method call that uh, uses some other library logic to send a signal to the hobby servo. Um, and then the delay is meant for regulating the speed. It delays 50 milliseconds, so this loop runs uh, 20 times per second. A couple things to note. Um, the nature of an embedded system is that it's very hard to debug. There's signals that are generated electrically. And otherwise, there's not a debugger built in to stop and check state. Sometimes it's very hard to tell what's going on. Two features that help with that are that there is a serial monitor, which uh, in this case is just a window, but in the Arduino would be a window within the IDE. And that prints out data that comes back over the serial port from the Arduino. You notice that there's a line in the program, which is the serial print line angle, 
and then initialization serial.begin. These are used inside the sketch to initialize this connection to a serial port, and then allows one to like send data back up the serial port to the host. Another feature here that we can use is that the Arduino IDE and this interface both include a plotting function, which if given a series of numbers, will just produce a graph of the data. These are features that make it much easier to debug basic programs and see what's happening to send data back and visualize it, um, all from a platform where it's otherwise kind of invisible to see what's going on. So those are some essential features that kind of show basic C++ structure of functions, variables, uh, some control flows, some Arduino-specific features, like the specific step and loop as entry points, the servo as an object that can drive hardware, the, the serial port as an object that can send data back up to a host.